Hey, I also love my yard. I got a great craftsman lawnmower, and I pay a yard service to do the yard. I'm a man. That's what we do. Well, ladies, here's good news for you. There's actually two ways for you to get this machine for free. One is at the end of my show. The other way is for you to go home tonight, take a tour of your garage. I want you to look at that man's work shed. Look at the tools he's using. After you've seen all of his tools, I want you to go up to him and say, Honey, I love you, and I would like for you to make the salads from now on. And I want a healthy one, three to five times a week, but I want you to use the tool you let me have in the kitchen. And then I want you to go ahead and give him this. Oh, don't worry, fellas, this is the deluxe version, okay? It's got the band-aids in there. By the time he's done making this salad with this tool, he's coming back to see me. And ladies, you're getting one of these tools of breakfast in bed. Because we know good tools, and you do deserve it. All right. Anybody here remodeling their house currently? We're at a good home show here. No? If you were going to remodel that house, what do you think the most expensive room is to remodel? Kitchen, without a doubt. If you think about that room, the uh, kitchen cabinets alone are worth between ten dollars and $30,000. You got coriander, granite countertops, uh, you got ceramic tile you walk on. You think about your appliances. Your refrigerator freezer is probably $2,000, unless it's sub zero, then it's about $5,000. You've got an oven, about $1,000, microwave, dishwasher, garbage disposal. You add it all up, it's quite expensive in that room. But the one thing that actually touches the food, you usually find that somewhere in the lower part of your cabinets, don't you? Usually sounds a little something like this. Oh, where's that lid? That sound familiar? You know, two meals a day, that's 700 meals a year. That's a job. You need to have the good tools to do a job that size. Now, your kitchens look great. You go to your favorite grocery store and you buy your favorite foods. And then you cook them. It's something that looks more like this. The all, I'm bringing them back to you later on tonight. Don't worry. The all-American set of pots and pans. You know, one lady said this set looks better than hers. Now, you got the porcelain pot from the attic. You guys remember for beerware, copper bottom cookware? Now, we buy a lot of these for people who are getting married. It's a very nice wedding gift, and it's not cheap. These are about $100 a piece in the department stores. The only issue with Revere Wear is that you've got to use the fluffy duffies to keep them shiny. More importantly, though, for cooking, very thin bottom, so it gets hot spots on the inside. You've got to constantly stir your food while it's cooking, or your food sticks to the hot spots. Anybody have any disposable cookware? <laughs> Called Teflon? Six weeks later, it's Teflon, isn't it? Dad's always complaining there's too much pepper on his eggs. He didn't use any pepper. That's where it came from. Uh, has anybody here been watching the news? The last couple of years, the EPA has been investigating Teflon cookware. One of the main ingredients that DuPont uses is called PFOA, and there's a big controversy over whether or not it's a carcinogenic. Now, DuPont has said that they're going to stop using it by the year 2015. It wasn't good enough. A class action lawsuit has been filed against DuPont. Chances are they're going to... Uh, outlaw the sale of Teflon cookware in this country very soon. They should, guys. It's a dangerous pan. Also, if you happen to have a pet bird at home, if you scratch a Teflon pan or, and put it back on the burner or you heat it over 300 degrees, uh, an odorless gas is, comes off and it will kill your bird. It's very toxic to birds. If you got Teflon, replace it with anything else. Last two pieces of cookware, then it's time to eat. One of my favorites in the whole wide world, the cast iron skillet. Better known to you ladies as the midnight skillet. He comes home after midnight, oh, that's golly, right? You, oh, you've been there. Now, the cast iron skillet's been around since the days of the pilgrims, and for a good reason. This is an excellent cooking utensil. The reason it's so good is that when it gets hot, it stays hot. Oh, time to turn the chicken, guys. I'm a professional. Please don't try this at home. Now, we're cooking chicken without any grease or oil, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that chicken with my bare hands. Now, this is a show, so I don't want you guys trying it at home. But I do need your help. On the count of three, I need everybody here to say, turn the chicken. Are you ready? One, two, three. Turn the chicken. All right, let's go ahead and turn that chicken a couple of times. Oh, come on. Emerald has bam. I can have my chicken. Hey, you guys ever see, uh, what's the first thing you got to do to a cast iron skillet when you get it home? Uh, season it, right? You put oils and greases in it, put it in the oven, turn the oven up. Metal expands, the oil and grease fills the pores, and you're supposed to have non-stick cookware. Of course, the first egg you cook sticks, doesn't it? A couple weeks later, you cook some fish, and that sticks. You know that's how we got fish sticks, Michael? Oops, there we go. I don't know side of here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, you may have ever seen the crud on the outside edge of a cast iron skillet? That's grandma's cooking. 
been around so many years, heated up and cooled down, and it's so porous, the food actually penetrates right through the metal and comes out the other side. That's what that crud is. Now, it's not a health issue. Every time you heat the pan, it kills the bad stuff. My point is, it's an excellent cooking utensil, just not the most sanitary in your kitchen. Last but not least is the number one selling cookware in America, aluminum cookware. Now, this is the number one selling cookware for two reasons. One is, aluminum conducts heat very, very quickly. Does anybody know what the second reason is? It's cheap. It's cheap. Very inexpensive. You're going to find it lining the shelves at most discount department stores. Does anybody know of any of the diseases associated with aluminum? They say Alzheimer's number one, also Parkinson's and Lou Gehrig's. Now, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if it's true. But I do know I've been told that people who die of Alzheimer's have eight times more aluminum in their brains than those who die of natural causes. They tell me by law, I've got to tell you that they have not conclusively linked the cookware as being a source of the aluminum. There's other things we use, like roll-on antiperspirants, that have aluminum in the ingredients. If you see the aluminum, change your brand. Well, I'm going to show you a quick experiment that's going to answer some questions for you. I'm going to take some clear water, and I'm going to pour a cup of water into this cast iron pan, and I'm also going to pour a cup of water into the aluminum pan. And I'm going to use a little Scotch-Brite scrub pad. These are the ones you get from the grocery store. Would you take a look at that and make sure it's a regular Scotch-Brite? There's nothing tricky going on. Does that look good? That's my sister. You better look at that, too. Just a regular old nylon. You want to take a look, too? It's my cousin, too. <laughs> I'm going to cut a little square off of here. Now, for those of you, let me put a square in each one of them. Now, I told you that that cast iron pan, uh, you know, it's porous, so things stick in there. Well, you know, we're supposed to have a lot of iron in our diet every single day. Everybody knows that, right? Well, I'll tell you what, for those of you who did not get your iron today, we're going to go ahead and take care of that right now. Go ahead and pass that around. Just kidding. You see, it's just, it's a great pan. It's just that it's porous and we're not going to get everything out of it every time we do it. Now, on my aluminum pan, you guys remember when you first get aluminum uh, cookware home, how nice and shiny it is? Then you start to cook in it, and that metal starts to darken up on you. And the more you cooked in it, the darker the metal would turn. And then you'd cook something like spaghetti sauce or tomato sauce. Anything with acid in it. Got nice and shiny again, didn't it? Where'd the dark stuff go? In the sauce. And where'd the sauce go? In the you. Now, I'm not a doctor, like I said. But I do know what the dark stuff is. It's called aluminum oxide. And my friends, it is poison. To your body. That's what it looks like. Now they're not going to tell you this in this country because this is the number one selling pan and money does talk, but they've already outlawed the sale of aluminum cookware in 11 countries on this planet. In those countries they have socialized medicine. That's where the government's paying for the health care. They're not going to allow somebody to sell you something that's going to make you sick because then they got to pay to get you better. Now not only do we pay for our own health care in this country, but let me give you a bigger startling fact. How many of you in this audience happen to own a dog or a cat? You got pets? Did you know that in the United States, it's against the law to go into a pet store like PetSmart or Petco and buy an aluminum bowl for your dog or cat? It's illegal to sell it to you. Now, they'll still be happy to sell you the cookware, but they're not going to sell you the aluminum bowl for your dog. Here's why. Kennels used to use aluminum because it's very cheap. Here's what they found out. That animal would eat all the food out of the bowl and then lick the bottom of the bowl. That aluminum oxide would get trapped in their throats and they'd end up with throat cancer. This is what they were getting on their tongues. Now, I don't know about you, but if a veterinarian is not going to feed an animal out of aluminum, I choose not to feed my family out of it either. So what are you supposed to use? Welcome to the Healthy Gourmet. I'm going to give you my one minute commercial on our cookware, then it's time to eat. Here's how we make our cookware. We start with what's called T400 magnetic steel. It is the same as cast iron, because it holds the heat. We just don't like that it's coarse. So we wrap this in three layers of a pure aluminum alloy, because aluminum will conduct heat very, very quickly. You just don't want to eat off of that surface. So we make it safe. We put the aluminum on the inside, where it never touches your food. We then wrap this in three more layers of what is known as T304 surgical stainless steel. Now this isn't just any stainless steel. This is what they use in the hospitals when they do a heart valve or a hip replacement. 